Wellness for Life is brought to you by Sanford Health Clinic and Same Day Surgery Center, Peramaria Community Center, Sally's Oils, Amy Lundberg, Fitness for the Soul, Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic, Pelican Drug Health Mart, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership. Welcome back to Wellness for Life. I'm here with Jenny Field of Pelican Drug in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota. We're going to talk about something kind of important today, medicine cabinet safety. What's in your medicine cabinet? Jenny, all the time, kids get into stuff, people take too much of this or that. Give us some statistics on medicine cabinet safety. Well, every minute of every day, a child gets into medication that they're not supposed to. So the Poison Control Center fields a call every minute, which is a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of kids in trouble, too. Yeah. What types of medications are involved in accidental overdosing? Pretty much everything. Um, pain medications, antihistamines, over-the-counter medicines like the Tylenol, multivitamins, herbal supplements, cough and cold medicine, everything. Okay, so when not kept in check, there's a lot of dangers in the medicine cabinet. Yeah. What could accidental poisoning look like? Well, or medication it, poisoning, sorry. It can really vary. Um, depending on what you take, um, it can be kind of mild drowsiness to um, seizures and um, complete unconsciousness, um, vomiting, tummy pain. It can kind of run the gamut. So anything that's out of the ordinary, unexplained, you know, should really try and check it out. Okay. What should I do if I suspect an accidental poisoning? Well, the first thing to do is not to panic. Okay. Um, Easier said than done. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, if you notice, you know, there's a pill bottle open or something like that, and, you, and you're pretty positive, first thing to do, um, check to make sure there's nothing in the mouth still. If okay. there's anything in the mouth, take it out. If they're unconscious, having trouble breathing, or having a seizure, call 911. That's definitely the first step. Um, but if they're, you know, seem to be fine, but you can tell that something's been taken, mm -hmm. call the poison control center right away and then you can give two ounces of water and then they'll give you further instruction based on what was taken and kind of an estimate of how much was taken. Okay. So if I want to prevent accidental poisonings, where is the best place to keep medications? Up and away and out of sight is always the best option. Always use, you know, closed tight containers and then think of places that you keep medicine that you're not, that you don't think of. Purses and nightstands. Yeah. So we, we all keep a bottle of Tylenol in our purse for a headache. Mm -hmm. So that's another place to think about keeping your purse on the, on the counter or something like okay. that. Okay, so kids can't get into it. Yep. Okay. How should medication be given? Medication should always be given with the dosing device that, it's, that it comes with. Mm -hmm. um, not all dosing devices are the same and um, not all spoons in our kitchen are the same. So one teaspoon in your house isn't the same as one teaspoon in my house. Gotcha. And that can be a big problem. Okay. So let's talk about Tylenol. Tylenol is a big issue when it comes to um, accidental poisonings and overdosing. It's in pretty much everything. Um, most of our cold, cough and cold medicines have Tylenol in it. It's mm -hmm. a combination of lots of things. Um, uh, pain medicines, prescription pain medicines, and over-the-counter pain medicines, a lot of them have Tylenol also. Okay. So reading your labels and checking to make sure that, you know, you're not doubling up on, yep. on multiple products with Tylenol. And then children's Tylenol uh, isn't labeled real great for children under two. Right. It just says ask a doctor. Right. So in that case, either call your doctor or call your pharmacist. We can help you, based on the child's weight, give you an appropriate dose. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. If I have some medication in my cabinet that I don't need anymore, where can I take it? Well, Otter Tail County has a great program. They have six spots available where you can drop off unwanted medications. Um, no questions asked. They, they don't need to know anything. Um, they just ask that you um, remove any personal information, your name from the label, okay. but, but keep them in the original containers with the name of the medication on okay. them. They're um, located at the Pelican Rapids Police Department, the PERM, and the Parkers Prairie Police Departments, as well as the Otter Tail County Sheriff's Office in Fergus Falls, and then the Otter Tail Operations Center in Otter Tail. Okay, great. Do you happen to know the phone number for the Poison Control Helpline? I do. You do? It is 1-800-222-1222. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jenny. That was some very useful information. on Wellness for Life.
Welcome back to Wellness for Life. I am here today with David Gottenberg of Gottenberg Chiropractic Clinic in Pelican Rapids okay. and Monaga. Today we're going to talk about jaw pain. And I have heard that chiropractic care can help alleviate some jaw pain. What are some symptoms that someone might bring to you with jaw pain? Um, I think probably two or three of the most common would be a clicking or popping. Another common complaint might be, of course, jaw pain. And then for some it would be limited opening or the jaw is in a locked position. Okay. Uh, some of the other less common would be, in, in symptoms people don't associate with jaw pain, would be neck pain or migraine headaches. Or how about people that are suffering from uh, bouts of dizziness uh, ringing in the ear, um, a muffled sound, even itching inside the eardrum or ear canal. That's all related to the jaw? Right. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about the ringing in the ear. That's called tinnitus, right? Right. How is that related to jaw pain? You know, that, there's, that is really an interesting concept and uh, there's a lot of good information out there and basically what it entails is, is that if in some instances there there may be adhesions around the jaw and it isn't so uncommon especially after an injury or something that's long-standing but what it really does is it creates um, a scenario where it can affect uh, or compromise the eustachian tube and also the um, lymphatic ducts and so that can be really upsetting to balance or equilibrium. Uh, it can cause ear pain and it also can cause this tinnitus or ringing in the ears. So could someone who grinds their teeth have jaw pain? You know that is that is a really you know good question and, it, and that's probably one of the most common causes and other types of causes um, have to do with sometimes the alignment between the top and bottom teeth. Let's say someone's had dental work. Uh, it could be due to sleeping posture. In fact, it could be due to our posture right now. This is the part that really, I think, marries chiropractic to jaw conditions because um, a, a real buzzword now is we hear people talk about a forward head posture where, for example, I'm sitting with my head in a forward position. And this has a dynamic relationship with the jaw and how it moves and its alignment. In fact, if the head sits forward as little as three centimeters, it increases the weight bearing by three times. So if the average head weighs 10 pounds, now you're supporting 30 pounds. Wow. One other thing I'd like to add is another really common cause is injury. And something that a lot of people don't think about is motor vehicle accidents or rear end collisions. When someone comes to you with jaw pain, how do you treat it? Um, where we start almost immediately is with muscle structure. Um, we'll show some pictures here of some really common muscles that are involved. We certainly want to balance the muscles left and right. In some instances, um, we apply pressure or simple stretching techniques to different areas, not just the jaw but the skull itself. And then we really work with a person as far as posture, both as far as the jaw and the neck, and exercises. Okay. That concludes our program today. Thank you, David, for some very interesting information. If you or someone you know is suffering from jaw pain, stop in and talk with David and see what he can do to help you. We'll see you next time on Wellness for Life. Thank you for watching Wellness for Life, brought to you by Sanford Health Clinic and Same Day Surgery Center, Paramaria Community Center, Sally's Oils, Amy Lundberg, Fitness for the Soul, Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic, Pelican Drug Health Mart, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership.